Well, it's almost Thanksgiving, but I wanted to do one quick short video. This is the office tank, that 30 gallon hex shaped tank. And looking at this, the algae on the front glass needs to be cleaned. But I wanted you to see it before I cleaned it because it brought back memories for me. When I was a teenager, I worked for a vegetable truck that went around the neighborhood selling vegetables, fruits and stuff. And in town, it stopped at a couple stores to give them supplies. And one of them was a fish store. Not a tropical fish store like we're thinking about, but rather a fish store that sold fish for eating. In the front window, which was a big glass window open to the sun, was a large tank. How large? You know, things change over time, and I would, no matter what I described, it's probably going to be wrong, because I don't remember exactly what it was. But anyway, my point is, its front glass was covered with this algae, just like you see here. That's why it's bringing back the memories. Only much more so because it was in the sunny window and nobody was taking care of the tank. But the net result was I was fascinated because every once in a while out of the darkness behind the algae would come a guppy, a colorful guppy of some type. I had no idea how many fish were in this tank. It was probably a high 20, maybe more, I don't know. Uh, but each week when we stopped there to deliver, I was fascinated. And so one day I asked the owner if he'd be willing to sell that tank and the stand it was on and everything in it. And he said, sure. That's all I remember of it, to be honest. I don't remember what I paid for it. I don't remember going uptown with the cart or something like that to haul it home. Uh, it just has the memory of that, what, the hidden fish behind the green. And so that memory came back as I was looking at this tank just before. I'm going to clean that off because I have some other memories I'd like to share with you. But you can see that uh, I just moved back here a pair of swordtails. I had it in the small tank hoping the female would lay her, uh, drop her babies there. That hasn't happened. And finally I just said, you know what? This tank has so much in it that it would be very protective of the mother anyway. And so I moved both a matching brick red sword and the female. Oh, there's a red tailed shark. He's getting big. I need to, I'm thinking of exchanging him for some, one of the smaller red tailed sharks from one of the other tanks in the other room. But anyway, this tank is just filled with guppies and babies, and every once in a while I'll fish out some and uh, move them out to the other tanks. But let me just clean that and give you a little bit more to look at. Okay, same tank, same view without the algae on the front glass. As with all of my tanks, it looks like a jungle. I like it that way. And I uh, keep the plants moving around so they get plenty of light. But you can see here there's a lot of fish in here. Uh, mostly guppies. Uh, that red-tailed shark that you saw. The uh, two clown loaches. I haven't seen them recently. I wonder how they're making out and then that pair of uh, brick red sword tails I just put in there to give them a chance to breed. But you can see there's a lot of activity here and like I say every once in a while I will take some of these fish out especially the the bigger ones males and females and put them in one of the other tanks and they don't get a chance to breed there. There's too many other fish to eat up any of the babies that happen to come out and so this is <laughs> sort of a breeding tank I mean, that's why these babies are doing so well. But uh, it, this brought back another story for me. Where'd that red-tailed shark go? There he is. Um, when I was young, in my teen years, neighbor across the street was the best uh, girlfriend of my sister. And he had a 20-gallon long tank in one of his rooms I remember going over to see once in a while and it was overgrown with an acris to the point where even more so than what you're seeing here and again like the tank in the fish store window every once in a while you see a fish come out of the green against the glass and then it would disappear again and so I never bought his tank but I was always fascinated by the fact that these fish could disappear like that and it was always interesting wondering what surprise was held behind all that growth. 
So anyway, this is what the tank should look like. And then every once in a while I do thin out all that growth and replant it. I have trouble throwing out plants, even though they're excess. Uh, my friend Bruce, he uh, says, no, just cut them off and throw them away. No, I can't do that. And so what you're looking at here is what I relax with in the office. I'm going to bring you out to the living room, uh, which we use as our fish room. And just want to show you something. On the left-hand side of this tank, you see the kabamba coming back. And when I say coming back, in earlier videos you saw it was overgrown, especially my corner tank behind us here. But then it went through a hiatus where it all disappeared. And so with the same uh, CO2 dosing every day and the leaf stone once a week, uh, it's all of a sudden coming back. And I really think it's a beautiful plant. And there's no fish in here eating it, which is a good thing. And it's coming up in a couple of places where I have it, as you see here. And so the lush garden, as I call it, is continuing to do well. I uh, haven't lost any fish in this particular tank. You do see those young black mollies that I keep talking about. Their parents were really nice sized black mollies, but they haven't gotten much bigger than this. And I've got a a male liar tail and two nice female liar tails off in the other tank you're trying to breed. The females look like they're ready to drop, drop young, uh, but they haven't yet. And the other thing that's doing well here, it's been a long time, is those neons. Uh, the ones in the corner tank are slowly dying off one at a time as that fungus or whatever it is catches up with them. But this school here stays at about, I think it's about 15 of them. And then we have a couple of the uh, sore tails that have grown up from our babies and uh, one of those females right dead center in the back is heavy right now and I might take her and put her in that office tank just to give her more cover if she's going to drop any babies and there's a nice male chasing her right now the ones I really like I've talked about before is the denison barbs I think they're called uh, over here on the left hand side and I spent more than I usually spend for fish. This was, but this was a good buy because usually I see them, they're like $18 a piece. And these were smaller and they were like $12.99. I said, you know what? So I got three of them. All three have done very well. They're getting bigger. And so their coloration is getting deeper. And so they're doing very well, despite the sword tails chasing each other around like just now. But you can see what I'm talking about, how beautiful their coloration is, especially their tail with that bright yellow and then that reddish stripe or black stripe with red up around the coral fins uh, giving them such a nice color. But they do very well here. I'm very pleased with that. And I just don't like to spend a lot of money for a fish that might die and then I'm gonna cry because I spent so much on it and it didn't last. These were a good buy, a good buy. And a brief visit to the corner tank, overgrown with plants, a lot of them uh, floating. Uh, the crypts over here are doing very well and they're getting bigger in the shadows and I've been taking some duckweed out of here by the bunch flows and that plant in the back here is still some cuttings from that one plant we got from Discus Madness many years ago uh, many, yeah, a year, I guess it was more than a year ago when Bruce and I went up there and uh, bought a couple sprigs of that for what I thought was too much money but it's been populating itself ever since and in its shadow, you really can't see it well, is the Madagascar lace plant, which has come back again. And of course, the one that always does well is this big Amazon sword, which sits in the middle of this tank. And actually, it would be a good looking tank if I took all the plants out and just left that Amazon sword. And so, uh, just keeping it brief, you're looking at the corner 55 gallon. And we just lost one of the angels recently. Uh, so we only have one left here. The other two I put in the bow tank, the one you just saw. And uh, he uh, looks lonely, I, but I've never seen one like him. It's uh, almost like a bluish tinge uh, when he gets in the right light. Like, do, like, oh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Show it off. See what I mean by that blue? Isn't that beautiful? I was over at Hidden Reef recently. My God, they had lots of angels, but none of them were under $20 a piece. And there was one particular uh, breed there of angelfish that were $289 a piece. Couldn't believe it. 
but this one is doing fine. Anyway, got a couple of the black mollies in here also. And uh, they don't get any bigger than what you see right here. So I don't know what that's about. And they, they've been around long enough that they should have gotten bigger than they are. That's my thinking. But they're a pretty one. And uh, most of the babies came out as liar tails. These two did not. And like I said, I'm trying to uh, breed true that liar tail. And there's the betta that was in the betta tank. And uh, when I lost the one, I wanted to give this one something to do in terms of some space to explore. So I moved him over here and he's doing just fine. I did buy another uh, male betta over at Hidden Reef this past week. They were only $2.99 for the common ones, but they look as good as the big ones, uh, the better ones, the older ones, if you will. And he's was chased around a little bit and he's disappeared. And every once in a while I see him come out of the, the plants and uh, this male somehow will find them and next thing you know they're chasing each other again. So there's a nice blue one in here and then in the bow tank we have that other one uh, which is a red one. But I haven't seen him since he got chased around a little bit by some of the other fish. So anyway, that's uh, the three big tanks and uh, the only thing left is the better tank, that divided better tank. Oh, there's, there's the blue one. There, you, it came out for you. Two ninety nine. I don't spend much more than that for a better. Uh, I'm just as happy with the, and he disappeared again. So that he stays out of everybody's way. Hey, listen, I'm gonna cut this short as I said. Wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Hope your hobby is doing as well as mine is here. Uh, just talking to Bruce, he lost his tank full of black mollies, uh, sailfin black mollies. Uh, he was on vacation and uh, the automatic feeders he had on all the tanks, this one tank, it uh, malfunctioned and uh, dumped all the food in there and he lost them. And they were, they were doing beautifully. So I've got to give a pair of these to him to replenish in that tank and see if he can get started again. He claims he had at least a hundred of them in one of those 10 gallon tanks, babies mainly. Uh, I wish I could have seen them because they were beautiful fish. All right, happy Thanksgiving. Till next time. Just a quick shot of the uh, divided, I think it's five gallon. You see the black mollies on the right. There's two of them there, two females heavy and a male. And on the left hand side, there's a beautiful female guppy and a couple of males. And also on that side is a pineapple sword. Here she comes. She was pretty heavy when I put her in there. We do have a lot of babies floating around in the, in the plants here. But I think she's ready to go back into the, one of the big tanks.